The time has come, and so have I. To homebrew Nero from Devil May Cry. Nero. The handy, white-haired, hangry husbando. Well, boyfriend. The blood of Sparta flows in his veins, and, as of DMC4, he served as the custodian to the dimension-slicing sword, Yamato. Do we make a race? Do we make another subclass? Do we make a magic item? Welcome to my wife is DMC. I'm DMV, and you're watching Husbando Homebrew, a show where we take content from anime, movies, video games, and everything in between, and turn them into fun D&D homebrew. If this is your first time here, I create D&D Homebrew where I use the story element as its foundation, emphasize on ease of use, and then pray to the dice gods that it ends up being balanced. Will the mechanics match the narrative? Absolutely maybe. Will it be fun? I'll do my best. Will it be broken and unbalanced? No promises! With that said, this party's getting crazy. Let's rock. Part 1. Classic Nero I get that DMC5 Nero is more popular and topical, but you know what? Let's respect the classics first. Rest assured, I'll be covering all the sons and grandsons of Sparta soon enough. So for you Zoomers out there who didn't have the childhood luxury of watching Barney the Dinosaur, Nero back in 2008 was an angsty husbando voiced by top-tier Power Ranger Johnny Young Bosch. You know, he was the Black Ranger back in... Uh, 1994, you know what? I'm still in my prime, shut up! Nero's got incredible agility, strength, and by the gods, he's got incredible skin. But of course, let's not forget his most special trait. The Devil Bringer. This shiny appendage grabs from a distance, slams from up close, and can even block attacks, the footage of which I would show you if I had the fucking skills for it. Sometime later in the game, he also gets to summon his stand, his devil trigger, by manifesting an aspect of the Yamato sword. Don't worry about that sword, though. Trust me, yo. We'll get to the Yamato and his daddy yo at some point, yo. Just make sure you like yo this video. Part two. What kind of homebrew? Demon blood, long limbs, Super Saiyan. I can't decide if he should be a tiefling, a bugbear, or an Asimar. But of course, that's not what you're here for. Let's see what we can do. The blue rose doesn't seem to do anything special, so let's skip that for now. His fighting style, though, looks very fighter-like. Although he seems to have some unarmored defense in some capacity, considering all he has is a coat and smoldering good looks. That arm though, that's unique, that's useful, that's key to his character. You might even say that's handy. And that's what I want to build. Of course you could argue that it's a luring cantrip like lightning lure, but no, we're taking the long way around and building something ourselves, damn it. That sword is looking fine too. With that revving mechanic and the fire effects, it's really looking lit. And then there's that devil trigger that kind of ups the ante. So for DMC4 Nero, we'll definitely go with the race for his many traits, a magic item for the Red Queen, and uh, something special for that arm. Something fun. Something useful. Something hand. Part 3 Demon Blood. So. Let's homebrew our homeboy and make a race called Demon Blood. First, we have this race called Demon Blood. Its narrative anchor represents the sons of Sparta as a whole and emphasizes how they appear human yet have superhuman qualities. It also hints at destinies, old grudges, and all the good stuff you see in Devil May Cry. If you've played any BMC game, you'll hopefully see how the narrative anchor lines up with the game's story. Next, let's look at his traits. First, ASI. I figure constitution and charisma would be a good start. The sons and grandson of Sparta get stabbed on the regular and all the fiendish stuff where they get emotional power boosts just screams charisma to me. Let's look at that age too. Honestly I can't tell if the likes of Dante, Virgil or even Nero live longer than human folk. Would Virgil outlive his son? Would Nero outlive Kyrie? Would it even matter since all their lifestyles might just end up with them getting killed? The text there is essentially my fancy way of saying, I don't know mate. Alignment. When have the boys ever been lawful? In terms of good or evil, well, they kind of had it all. DMC3 Dante was fairly chaotic neutral, then turned chaotic good after meeting series best girl Lady. Virgil was kind of chaotic neutral in 3 and arguably 4, but damn did he go the deep end in 5. Even took his sons on. Best dad ever. And of course, our best boy Nero. Topic of the video. Kinda chaotic neutral if it weren't for his girlfriend and series best girl Kyrie. Size and speed, fairly normal, so let's move on. Bold, aha! 
This is the exact same thing as the halfling's brave trait, but I just changed the word, since the boys are so brave and confident to the point of negligence. Here we go, superb resilience. Finally, something new. And definitely something balance buffs would slightly wince at. This is basically how I translate how the boys keep surviving all sorts of nasty injuries. It doesn't make them immortal, but it certainly makes them a little bit harder to kill. Okay, languages, fairly standard, and then, oh, what's this? A sub-race? Indeed, I prepared three sub-races for demon blood. But for now, let's focus on what I made to represent DMC4 Nero in... Part 4. Legacy. I get that Legacy is kind of a DMC5 thing, even used as the theme song of the game. A song that, as the kids would say, totally slaps. But I felt that the name was better suited for DMC Nero. Legacy's narrative anchor broadly describes Nero being a vestige of Virgil's will, and how they act as a sort of custodian to their parents' inheritance, which manifests in their demonic appendage. I don't actually know if Nero's arm changed at the point where Virgil kicked it. I'm probably wrong in terms of canon, but I felt it was appropriate, so I took a few liberties. So, a subrace ASI, plus one to charisma to account for Nero's attitude, very on Power Ranger-like, and the general hubris a superhuman would have if they lived among normal folks. The other increase is strength or dexterity, reflects that actual superpoweredness. That's not a word. So at this point, the race and subrace in total grants a plus one to constitution, a plus two to charisma, and a plus one to strength or dexterity. Why plus two to charisma and not other physical ability scores? Well, hold that thought for a bit. Moving on, audacious defense. Basically natural armor fueled by being a jerk. Or if you want to get technical, AC of 14 plus charisma modifier plus proficiency bonus. I see this to represent Nero's audacity, see what I did there? To insult and make light of dangerous situations as a way to throw off his enemies or to pump himself up. Demonic inheritance, haha, <laughs> well, it's easy to say this is his devil bringer, but the specifics of that lies in part 5 later on. For now, just know that this is basically a magic item that you're always attuned to, and yes, it eats up a slot. For balance. It's also his dad's party gift, if it were encased in a box, shaped like his appendage, and it's locked. Best dad ever. Manifest power, here we go, look at that lengthy boy. Like the tiefling races from Mordenkain and Stone of Foes, this one comes online at 5th level. Too long didn't read, this is how I represent Devil Trigger, where you gain a damage buff equal to your proficiency bonus, and a regen ability that might probably piss off 18th level champion fighters. Sorry. Also, unlike a straightforward duration, this one has a resource called DT, which is your charisma plus proficiency. The latter of which is meant to scale in case you don't want to invest your ASIs in charisma. This is a form change where you can stagger its usage rather than blow your load in one battle only for it to last 3 rounds. Happens to the best of us. As a bonus, it's closer to the game where you can ration your DT meter, though unlike the game, this resource only regenerates at a short rest. Now before you accuse me of straying too far from the video games, I was tempted to have DT regenerate every 10 minutes or so. Ultimately, I decided against it because I wanted to avoid too much bookkeeping that might slow down the session. Okay, so... About that devil bringer thing, say no more! Part 5 Magic Items. So, for DMC4 Nero, I made two, yes, two magic items, both of which involve his hands. You might say he's quite handy. Anyway, let's start with the Red Queen. I know what you're thinking. DMV, this is uncommon? Well, yes, Flame Tongue, while rare, is 2d6 consistently. This one can go potentially 3d6 on top of the 1d8 or 1d10 of a longsword, but hear me out. Maxing out his exceed gauge, barring standing still and revving the blade manually, requires incredible timing. I would definitely show you the footage of said timing because I have pro gamer skills, but I can't because reasons. So this one works with a 0-3 charge system, where you can roll to gain a charge as a bonus action, or just get one for free as an action. And to represent that timing-based charge you can do in the game, this one grants you a charge based on the number rolled on the d20 when you make an attack. 13 for one charge, or get max 3 charges on a natural 20. Also note, you can't store the charges of this thing. You make an attack, you blow your load, even if you miss or you do it prematurely. And there is nothing wrong with that because it happens to the best of men, okay? And as a small bonus, it's a plus one magic weapon, so yay! So, I've been avoiding this all this time because I want your audience retention, but here it is! I tip my hand and present to you the Devil Bringer. Yes, the card has a bit of a narrative anchor to it, but basically it houses the Yamato. If you've played DMC5, we know that Daddio wanted to get his sword back, so he chopped his son's arm off. 
it makes sense in context. So, this arm shines when you're near Fiendkind or stuff that's been messed with by Fiendkind. Kinda like a black light you can't turn off. You can also block with it, though it eats your reaction, which, let me tell you, is easier to pull off in D&D compared to how it's done in the game. And of course, it gives you new options for your grapple and shove. You've got your Buster, which is Nero's signature grab and smash move. You've got your Snash Hit, that you can grab enemies from 10 feet away because you like them so much. And then you've got Hold, which is kind of busted, not gonna lie. Half your damage while the target grappled by you takes the same amount of damage. Granted, the grapple ends afterwards, but that's because I wanted to balance the scales just a teensy bit. Part 6. Next steps. Well, that was a bit of a journey, huh? If you think this is something you or your players would be interested in trying out, do let us know how it goes in the comments or through our Twitter and other socials. The Ko-Fi link below where you can find the PDF is also a place where you can leave your feedback. Speaking of which, do check out that Ko-Fi link below to find the full documentation that contains the race, sub-race, and magic items that I showcased in this video, uh, along with a few other interesting extras that you might find interesting, even as a bit of foreshadowing on the next video. <laughs> Leave your predictions on what I'll be working on next, or let me know which character or power you want to see down in the comments below. If you want to support us, leaving a like is the way to go, and subscribing really helps us grow. If you want to support us even more, there's that Ko-Fi link that I mentioned a while ago. I'm rhyming like crazy today. Good job on making it to the end. Thank you for being here, and we doubly appreciate any support you throw our way. If this is your first time here, this channel does homebrew D&D content and even has an ongoing single-player campaign set in a homebrew Gundam setting. This has been My Wife is DMC. I'm DMV, and I'll see you in the next Husbando Homebrew.